Griffin is here and we are ready for questions. We'll start on the front row here, second seat. Okay. Coach Kiffin, uh, right here. Uh, Jamal Kennedy, WSFA 12 Sports here in Montgomery. Um, right, right here doesn't help. Sorry, right here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, Quinshawn Judkins, uh, what can you say about just the, the person that he is to be able to bring him as a sophomore and what he meant to your, your offense and your team last year? Yeah, it's really amazing as a freshman to be able to do that and that many carries. I think he led the conference in carries, yards, and touchdowns. And um, to do that as a freshman, um, he has an elite mindset. Uh, and to be able to carry the ball that many times and um, late in games still running strong. So we actually think he can get a lot better, um, like anyone from their first to second year. So we're really excited to see that development. Second row and then pass the mic up. Dan Peck, ESPN 106.7 in Auburn. Coach, uh, former Ole Miss coach Hugh Freeze is back in the league coaching Auburn. Your relationship with coach uh, and uh, how, how well you two know each other? Um, <clears throat> a little bit. Uh, my brother worked at Ole Miss on, under him, and so uh, I got to, to meet him a few times. Did a, he's done a great job wherever he's been uh, winning games. So I'm excited for him to get that opportunity to be back in in the conference. Left side, front row. Uh, Chris Farble in KSU, 8.5 FM in Columbia. Uh, Coach, on Monday, Fadil Diggs said the quarterback he went up against that gave him the most troubles in edge rusher was Jackson Dart. I just want to ask, how has Dart developed since he came in from USC last year, and what do you expect from him in his second year at Ole Miss? Well, Jackson's had a great offseason. Um, Again, in this portal world, we just think everybody's going to be great right away, you know, um, expectations. And so it was his first year in our system. And he was competing to be the starter all the way till I think, the third game of the year. So, or fourth game of the year. So he, he's really developed well on and off the field, become more of a leader. And um, we're really excited about him. Front row. Hey, Coach. Uh, Steve Moulton, WZZN out of Huntsville. On the quarterback room in general, how talented do you think that quarterback room is? Yeah, I'm excited. It's a, it's the deepest room we've had that way, um, and excited about where we came from. You know, um, Luke had already decided to transfer before even our bowl game, so we really were down to one quarterback um, coming into spring, and now to be at four. It's really exciting. Left side, second row. Tyler Shaw with KBTX and College Station. You guys have beaten A&M the past couple of times. Just what's it like playing those squads and um, Jimbo Fisher? And just kind of what's your relationship with Jimbo like now? Um, <clears throat> playing A&M is extremely challenging. I mean, they have the best looking players, you know, um, you know, tied with, you know, Alabama probably of anybody that we play. And now I guess Georgia next year, but um, it's really challenging playing them because you got mismatch issues that you got to work on because um, they got, they have so much talent. Playing there was a big challenge, which I didn't know if it would be because their season hadn't gone great. So I was kind of hoping the crowd wouldn't show up, but the place was rocking when we played there, and um, really tough place to play and a great fan base. So um, uh, we've been fortunate to beat them both times and. Look forward to a big challenge this year. Right side, front row. Uh, Jacques Doucet, WAPT, being Baton Rouge coach, if I could just sneak a couple in. First, uh, Walker Howard transferring. How is he doing? And your thoughts on playing Brian Kelly in LSU again this year? Yeah, we're excited that Walker came in. Um, really competitive kid. Has really jumped into the playbook and uh, had a really good spring. So we're excited about adding him to that room. Um, Brian's done a, a great job there in a short period of time. Um, you know, inherited really good roster and did a great job of adding to that roster, especially with the quarterback and portal guys. So um, they got it rolling, and um, and he, he's done a good job wherever he's been. Left side, third row, then pass the mic going. Hey, coach. Uh, so Cedric mentioned that. You know, you're a lot different in the locker room than people might think on the outside based on seeing your social media and that sort of thing, a lot quieter. Um, so could you just speak to that at all about, you know, uh, how you differing, you know, with uh, outside and then inside with the team? 
Yeah, I, I think I took a different approach than most coaches, which is kind of what I do in a lot of areas when it comes to social media, especially Twitter. And I just was like, you know, I just started it, and I was like, you know, I want to feel it's like to be a normal person and comment just like I would if I was a normal person or retweet things, um, you know, without having a, you know, meeting with my SID before we figure out whether this is the proper thing to tweet that everybody will like and stuff. So um, if I did that, I wouldn't be tweeting very much. But I just kind of, and then it just started. It wasn't a master plan, um, kind of like Juice's Twitter. Like, it just kind of fell together, and then I just kind of ran with it and embraced it. Front row, right side. Hey, Coach, good to see you again. AP Stedham, AP and Kelly, as we see, a syndicated radio show. Coach, um, you're always studying different uh, strategies for the game. I was wondering, what's your experience uh, studying multi-quarterback system? That's a possibility. Yeah, I would prefer that not to happen. But again, we don't ever do something just because we're supposed to. So if that's the best way, to, best chance to win, then we would do that. Um, I just think that that's been challenging and there's some times you can point where it's worked but most of the time it's not really worked great um the team's got two different people calling cadence and different plays and stuff so um i, I would prefer that not to happen left side fourth row hey coach grayson we are with outkick.com um as you look ahead to the 2023 season there are a lot of new faces and a lot of dynamics within the sec uh which game do you look forward to most on the calendar and why yeah, I, I don't. I, now this is kind of coach speak, but um, we, we just got to get to camp and start working and worry about the opener and and go from there. And like I said in the other room, um, you know, this is now like you're in the NFL. I mean, the, the SEC is so competitive. As so many of the premier players in college football now come to the SEC from around the country and don't stay at home where they used to. So um, you got challenges every single week. Right side, second room. Hey, like with you guys bringing in, you know, a couple more transfer quarterbacks this year. In your in your past experience, what are some of the factors in, in kind of making for a, a successful marriage when you bring in a new quarterback? And and like you said, you know, Jackson, it took him a few games to kind of get his feet wet. What are the most important factors to to making sure that process is a successful one? Well, I think with Jackson in the first couple games, get his feet wet. Um, you know, that was again, we just do whatever it takes to win. And we were running the ball great early on. Um, was looking at the schedule that wasn't we were going to be able to play really good defense, I thought, versus our opponents that we were playing. And so we kind of took the ball out of his hands to make sure we were winning the games. You know, I think we ran 63 times or something, you know, against Georgia Tech. So um, he's really done a good job. I think that quarterback thing of bringing them in, I kind of let them experience some things on their own at first and then kind of feel them out and see how they are and and then kind of get more involved one-on-one -on -one with them. Uh, and um, just kind of the way that I've done it, I think Matt Krause spoke to that before. Um, you know, the difference of after being there a semester or so in the relationship. Left side, third row. Sammy Roebuck, WTVA. How have you seen Pete Golding mentor players already on the defense? Yeah, Pete does a great job off the field. Um, he's always got kids in his office talking to him, um, helping him out. Uh, really smart guy that does dig into the players because, you know, when we meet, ask about a player, he already knows their whole background and, and life situations and stuff. So he does a great job of that. Second row, right side. Coach Michael Brauner, WNSP in Mobile. You obviously have a pretty documented relationship with Nick Saban. I was wondering if you could expand on that a little bit and just talk about how much he's met in your coaching career. Well, I'm extremely grateful to Coach Saban and our time together, and most importantly, him giving me an opportunity to, to learn from him. And um, I mean, he's the best to ever do it. I've said it before. I really do believe he is the best coach to ever do it because you guys know in here, I kind of, I take in all the information and look at it instead of just like, okay, a record. He's done it in a time of scholarship limitations where some of those older coaches didn't have them and they could, I mean, what, what if Nick Saban didn't have an 85 rule? What would his roster look like if he had 150 scholarships to give? And also he's done what I don't think anybody did over time of 
do it continually with so much staff turnover. You know, so many, so many people are hired off of his staff. Other places are to be head coaches. And, you know, it's kind of like, man, all these first round picks, and he loses these coordinators, like, you know, that's why we have fine bombs, so he can motivate him every other year and say, oh, his dynasty's over, and, and you know, this is the end of Saban, and then we're like, hey, thanks a lot for pissing him off. Um, and Paul's always wrong on this subject, so, um, and he just did it again the other day. You know, if he doesn't make the playoffs, you know, is, you know, he's not any good as a coach. So thanks, thanks, Paul. <laughs> Left side, third row. Hey, coach. Uh, Jason Williams, WTVA Nine News in Tupelo. I was just wondering, uh, with this being your second time being a head coach in the SEC, how would you say how much you've grown in your four years at Oxford and between the time you were last head coach at Tennessee and now being your fourth year in uh, Ole Miss? Yeah, I was talking to somebody actually the other day from that year at Tennessee, and we were just telling stories and stuff, and it really seems like a lifetime ago, um, like a whole different life. So a lot of things have happened since then. Um, you know, and this, I've said before, you know, this Ole Miss and this moving to Oxford um, ha has really been amazing for me personally. Um, my daughter moving with me to go to Oxford High School and now to go to, now to, go to Ole Miss. Um, is really special and, and something that was missing and and so um, it, it's been an awesome time there and, and I'm like I said in the last room I'm extremely grateful um, not just the leadership at Ole Miss but the people of Oxford and how they've accepted her. Last two questions right side third row. Rob Brown sideline sports in Memphis you're the son of a coach and I remember your dad when he coached and he's a big influence on you when I was in school at Auburn, at the end of the year, all my friends used to go in with Coach Dye and they kind of show you where you fit in on the depth chart. Sometimes you didn't fit in, they'd say move on. Do you still get to have those conversations with people? Because I worked with a kid for 12 years in Memphis. His, his dad coached at Alabama. And he was basically a human concussion dummy, he told me. And he got the hell beat out of him, but he made it five years through that system. Graduated, got that letter on the wall. And he can go in anybody's office in the state of Alabama and they say, you went through all that and just got to hug your parents on senior day. You loved it that much. Do you have those conversations with people and remind them what it means to stick it out and not quit, come back to Oxford one day and what that can do for them? Wow, that was a long one. Too <laughs> <laughs> much coffee. <laughs> that's not coffee, that's Red Bull. Um, <clears throat> I, I do think that's really missed nowadays and that that's, the generation but that's portal and unfortunately outside of probably walk-ons we don't have that much anymore they just aren't they just don't think like that and it's too much outside information coming in and it's too much grass is greener and I don't like what's going going on so I'm gonna take my ball and run and unfortunately that's the world that we're in so I, I do miss those stories you still have them usually with walk-ons um, but th those are neat stories of different places of being and still having relationships with some of those players that weren't the star player, but were just like the amazing kid. Or over time, it's been cool um, to hire a couple of them, you know, to get them into coaching or a recruiting department because their passion for the place or the passion for the game to have that around. Final question, front row. Coach Nick Brooks with WTVY in Dothan, Alabama. First, um, you played Troy to open up your season a year ago. They had, um, I think it was 10 to, 10 to 3 or 7 to 3 going into the halftime. Um, really competitive game towards the end of the fourth quarter. Just kind of your um, evaluation on that game. And then the second question I have, uh, I actually get uh, mistaken for you a lot. I go to high school football games a lot, and they'll actually call me Lane Kiff, and I just want to know what your thought is, if you think I actually look like you. or They're just... They're just uh, seeing things. Yeah, that was the longest question. That's the strangest question. <laughs> now I don't even remember the first question because this is the last. Do you get called T Daniel Tosh too? Yes. <laughs> okay. Um, I get that actually too. Like, like I'll be walking through somewhere and somebody will be like, 
are you Lane Kiffin? And I'll be like, no, I hate that dude. He sucks. <laughs> it's really cool because the conversation's like over and you can keep moving. So, um, and it's run to my, down to my daughter. She does it now. Like, you know, she's like, I don't like all the attention, you know, because the last name. So people be like, oh, are you Landry Kiffin? And she's like, nope. I heard bad things about her. You know, and like, so she's kind of learned that same trick too. Um, so I'm sorry that you get, get paired in with me. So, but I would embrace it. I would just go with it. What's your mom's name? <laughs> I got to ask my dad some questions now. Um, I, I would just embrace it and be like, you probably get like free drinks at places and stuff, like um, just depending on what state in the SEC you go to. But um, so, next question. Okay, I think we're done. Thanks, Bill. Right. That's a good one to end on.